Okay, um, well, there's several new things happening here for me. I'm using for a start my new Moto X Play phone to record my voice, to do a voiceover for the video. So I've recorded the videos ahead. Um, I've put them into Power Director and uh, I'll be explaining what's going on here in a moment. Um, and I'm going to Bluetooth my sound recording from Easy Voice Recorder over to my laptop and uh, I will then be able to upload that WAV file directly, hopefully, into my, uh, into my video here to overlay it so you'll hear the finished result. The microphone on the Moto X is very good, so that's why I'm using it. It seems better than anything else I have. Okay, and uh, what we're seeing on the screen here is uh, uh, the beginning of a kind of demo. Um, I've got my digital access Zephyr plugged in. I've got JMRI running, Java Model Railroad Interface. Uh, a script is running. It's one of the uh, scripts you can get um, a standard, I think. Um, when you download, it's a it's an out and back type of thing with a middle station stop. Uh, my station is just the point between the points in the middle there, about the signal, uh, the semaphore signal. There's a color light signal as well. The script is running, so it's driving my Batman 25 up and down. It stops at the semaphore. Uh, I've got block detection working, and it uh, sets the semaphore to clear. Uh, the train starts after delay. Um, slightly confused why the script's working in the way it is there, but anyway, uh, I'll go into more detail in subsequent videos. Uh, but that's, for now, that's what's happening. Um, you can see the little block detector on the left there, and uh, I've got the DS64, Digitrax DS64. It's a pretty simple setup, um, I haven't even got the points fitted with motors yet. There's a motor there on that point but it's not wired in. And uh, okay here we can see going back the opposite direction. The horn blows and it will stop when it reaches the middle block and waits for the colour light. In this case that seems to work better. The signal isn't changing until after the delay. Uh, there we are there's the yellow. In fact on uh, well with the same decoder in the, in the engine, there is a delay. There's always a delay starting up, which means that the signal does change. They they actually effectively immediately go together, the starting of the engine and the signal, which uh, in that case looks like the signal's changed first. If you if you've got another engine on there, which you might see later, uh, it appears that um, the engine starts with just a moment before the signal changes, which is slightly weird, but uh, it works well with the sound engine. Uh, anyway, that's that part. I'll stop this recording and uh, try to upload it and see if, uh, if it's worked. I'll be back in a moment for the rest of the video. Okay, I'm back. Uh, that process was very easy. I synced my Bluetooth uh, devices, my laptop and my phone, and then there's a file transfer option. Uh, having recorded my WAV file on my phone, I then clicked on file transfer. It showed me it was transferring, told me where it was marked, gave me the option to put it in documents, and then I just pulled it into the video and dropped it in and Bob's your uncle. It was very, very easy, so I'm very impressed. I had to uh, slightly raise the volume level on the recording in the video because uh, it was slightly quiet, but that's easy enough. Um, okay, so uh, what am I looking at now? We are trying to run scripts on here. There's a few issues. Uh, the Zephyr takes control. And I've also got my Y throttle open, so this is JMRI's Y throttle running on a wireless server on the laptop and uh, using Engine Driver app on the phone. And um, in theory, they should all be synced together. So the 
Digitrax Zephyr Throttle, the controller on the right, uh, the phone and the software throttle on the laptop. Um, should you all be controlling the same engine? It's a bit odd how all this does or doesn't connect. Sometimes it works, depending on the order in which you've loaded JMRI it seems, you have to get the right order. Uh, I haven't quite worked out exactly which it is, I seem to hit on it sometimes. Uh, I'm trying to analyse the exact uh, way that does things, but um, maybe I should get back to the JMRI and maybe somebody will comment on this. Okay, um, you can see here the, the phone on the on the desk there, on the table, is just uh, reflecting what the script is doing at the moment. It's the, the, the speed it changes, uh, the horn blows out of function 3, the others look like they're switched on but they were, they're on off switches so that's why they're showing as green. Obviously the sound is on but I think that says bell on there. So that means the uh, engine driver up needs the function keys changing on uh, for the screen. That's why it says that. Um, but you can see at the moment it says reverse and there's a horn blow and the, the speed will increase. There's a slight delay between the throttle on the computer uh, there's a throttle on the computer deciding what to do um, and the wireless throttle it takes a few moments about three or four seconds sometimes to get the signal through to the phone but it is working um, and it's quite impressive to see the three devices all connected up and following the script One of the issues is that there's a timeout in the controller, which means this will only work for a few minutes. Uh, I'm not sure why somebody, again, text me, comment, uh, explain it to me, because what happens is the uh, Zephyr takes over control. Um, so if you've got that on stop, which you should have really, you don't want it on go because you don't want the train running away but uh, the Zephyr will take over control and stop the engine in the middle of the script which is uh, to do with stealing and so on I think but I haven't quite worked out the, the, the ins and outs of why that's working and the way it is OK I'm going to take a breath for a moment um, you can see that going up and down nicely in a few moments I'll be sharing something very exciting a uh, virtual sound decoder with you so uh, yes, I'll upload this sound recording and we'll be on to the next part of this video.
Okay, I'm back and um, I'm now yes, ready to record the next section. Vir uh, virtual sound decoder, what is that all about? VSD. <clears throat> um, it's very much in development. Uh, JMRI have got the bits of code in there, but uh, if you read through the accompanying notes, it's uh, still in its early days and uh, the developer has not finished making this complete product yet. Um, you can find out more online on YouTube. Uh, I think his name is Twin Dad, or his account name is Twin Dad. If you look him up, he's the person doing it. So uh, he's been a bit busy with other things, um, but he's made some interesting progress. So what I'm doing here is running uh, a yes, a script with a virtual sound decoder uh, in the software pretending it's a chip in the engine, if, if you get what I mean. The sound decoder is on the laptop, effectively, so uh, the sound you hear is coming out through the laptop speakers. I was trying to get some other speakers fitted up, but I had the wrong connection, so uh, I need to dig out my other ones. Um, it might sound better. Um, v virtual sound decoder, I won't call it VSD. Uh, virtual sound decoder allows you to have a spatial representation of uh, of your railway uh, so so eventually you would be able to have an engine appearing to be traveling from one side to the other and even with depth so it's uh, 3d and um, if I can get some more of that sort of working in the future to show you I will at the moment it's not doing that I'm simply running the sound from the laptop, it's not knowing where the listener is in relation to the train, but eventually it could it could do that. Uh, at the moment, then I have a steam locomotive, a 56XX class engine, XGWR on the layout, and there we are. You can hear the sound as it kind of accelerates. That's me running it manually rather than using the script, but uh, I will run it from the script in a moment. I had to reset this engine just now. Um, it was running very strangely in the wrong direction when I was running the script. Um, it's. I think it's been wired backwards internally and that had some pretty strange effects even when the decoder was set to work in reverse uh, trying to understand which way round I had to place it the sounds are very rough admittedly by the uh, producer of them and they are American steam engine sounds obviously uh, eventually it would be possible to load up whatever sounds you want and associate them and uh, the sounds, because they're, they're coming out of speakers around the system, they're not coming out of the actual engines themselves. Uh, there's no fitting of sound decoders, there's no uh, hassle with opening up engines to do that, buying of decoders. You could just upload the sound onto the software and uh, run the trains. So I, I like it. Um, there are alternatives to this in other ways, but uh, this is one possible solution. Um, I'm not saying that I will use it entirely because uh, at the moment it's in its early days and um, there, there's still glitches with it. So uh, we'll have to see. It does hang occasionally, for example, and um, yeah, the sounds are rough. The transition from one sound to the next is very rough. Um, but uh, yes, I hope you like the demo. I hope this works, showing that it's quite a capable piece of software in many respects already and given some more development it could really be a very useful tool to to bring sound and life onto a layout i'll leave talking for now you can just enjoy watching the engine move thank you for watching and i'll say goodbye now and uh, enjoy the rest of the video do subscribe um, comment I'm always looking for, for your comments and uh, I'm happy to respond to any queries. So uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. All the best. Bye bye.